In the last video, we visited all the optical components on the rail here, the optical pumping apparatus. In this video, let's talk about these three coils here. They're very important for the experiment. So it turns out that the rubidium atoms and the resonances that we're trying to excite are very, very sensitive to stray magnetic fields. So what we have to do to get this experiment to work, first of all, is we have to work very hard to cancel all of the stray fields that might be in the vicinity of this entire apparatus. The dominant field likely is the Earth's magnetic field, which needs to be canceled, but because we're inside of a building that has various metal substructures and frames around the room, we actually really don't know what the magnetic field environment is for this experiment at all, but we do the best we can. Like, for example, this apparatus, as you see it here, is actually oriented approximately north because that would be the direction of the Earth's magnetic field in this room, and so if we can get it aligned approximately north, then we know that the magnetic field must just be passing parallel to the optical rail, and it makes it a bit easier, a bit easier to get our hands around canceling it out. So that's the where we start, but that's where the coils come in also. The first coil I'll, I'll talk about, which is important for the earth canceling effect, but not so much for the experiment, is this Helmholtz coil right here. This one formed by this pair right here. We're going to call this the vertical Helmholtz coil, and in the discussion of optical pumping, there'll be terms about vertical field, vertical current, vertical Helmholtz coils, and we're always referring to these, anything vertical, because as you can see, the rubidium sample, which is inside this plastic case here, will be immersed in a vertical magnetic field created by these Helmholtz coils whenever these coils have current sent through them. So if we send current through these coils right here, a vertical magnetic field will appear. It'll either be up or down depending how it's polarized, but it's used to cancel the vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field that this plastic box might find itself in. So as the experiment begins, some current is run through this coil here, and we look to the signal, look at the signal to verify that we're canceling the Earth's magnetic field and that will be discussed in a later video. So that's what this Helmholtz coil is for. The next one is this Helmholtz coil here, this large one. This can create a horizontal magnetic field and immerse the rubidium atoms in that. So this is called, again, in the subsequent videos and discussion, horizontal field, horizontal current, horizontal anything will always correspond to these, this Helmholtz coil here. And as you might guess, when the current is run through these coils, a magnetic field is going to appear horizontally, either towards the left or towards the right, that will, of course, immerse the rubidium atoms in that field. So we have a vertical Helmholtz coil and a horizontal Helmholtz coil, so we can independently control vertical and horizontal components of magnetic field on the sample of rubidium atoms inside this plastic case. It turns out that the horizontal coil will be more important for the experiment because once we feel like we have the vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field canceled, then we get careful control over the horizontal field by sweeping it. In other words, we start at zero magnetic field and ramp it up to some higher magnetic field. And what we try to do is somewhere between zero and whatever maximum we're able to provide here, we hope to exactly cancel the Earth's magnetic field at one point during that ramp. So at one point during our ramp of the horizontal field, we hope this the horizontal Earth's magnetic field will get canceled, and this one is doing its job as canceling the Earth's vertical magnetic field. So at that instant, the rubidium atoms will experience zero net magnetic field. And anything off of that zero net, net magnetic field is under our control so we can immerse the rubidium atoms in some net horizontal field, and that will be very important for our data taking, as you'll see in a later video. So that's what these two Helmholtz coils are for. This one is the more active one in the experiment, as I mentioned, because the horizontal magnetic field is swept. If you look very carefully around the plastic case here, you'll see these sort of reddish wrappings right here around the front and back face of the plastic case containing the rubidium atoms. What these coils are for, this is how radio frequency field, radio frequency field, or RF, is applied to the rubidium atoms. The RF will typically be in the form of an electromagnetic signal of about 50 to 100 kilohertz or so. So that's a sine wave, an electromagnetic wave of about 100 or 150 kilohertz, whatever you're choosing, will be applied to the rubidium atoms via these coils right here. So that's how we apply fields to the rubidium atoms using these three sets of coils. Vertical Helmholtz coil to cancel the Earth's magnetic field, vertical magnetic field, horizontal Helmholtz coils to cancel and then control the horizontal magnetic field the atoms find themselves in. Then, of course, RF coils here that allow us to apply a kilohertz radio frequency field to the rubidium atoms to tweak with the optical humming that eventually occurs.